ask is about the role of the Norwegians in the Civil War and one particular see? one which is Hans Christian Hegg. So I want to let this play for a little bit so that you get a flavor of what it was like fighting in the Civil War. So and I hope the sound comes out okay. Regiment there under Hans Christian Hegg, and that's what I'll be talking about today, particular to him and the 15th Wisconsin, which was a pretty much an all Norwegian regiment. So give me a second here because I want to switch uh, displays here. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's spelled ACG. You'll see it in a minute here. There we go. Okay. So Hans Christian Hegg is considered one of the greatest Norwegian American Civil War heroes that we know. Actually throughout the world. Even in Norway they acknowledge him. They have a monument to him in his hometown where he was uh, born and raised. And of course we look at him as one of the greatest uh, officers who was on the region. So I want to give you a little story about uh, his life and as the battle that you saw, this is where he died. He died in the battle at Chickamauga. Now those of you that are spelling it, that's how you spell it, Chickamauga. Chickamauga is named after an Indian tribe that uh, was part, uh, I believe was uh, What state is that in? Yes, named after uh, Chickamauga is actually a name of a creek. It's, it's named after an Indian tribe, and that's where the Bible took place. This is in northeastern portion of Georgia. Okay, and if you're uh, all of, any of you from, uh, not know where Chattanooga is, <laughs> okay, so you know where Chattanooga is. It's just a little bit south of there, about 20 minutes, and it's a beautiful uh, park to visit. You can go there. And I'll show you some pictures of, uh, you know, at least the location where he died because there's a monument for him as well. So, oh. 
me a second here. Okay. Okay, this is a date to remember as far as Hans Christian Hegg. This is the day that he died. Let me read you a story here. Uh, Hans Christian Hegg's final day of life was at Chickamauga in a nearby field hospital on September 20th, 1863. Now, if you notice September 20th, which is coming up pretty soon, will mark the 150th anniversary of his death. All the reason why I'm excited about giving this presentation. Mm -hmm. Very noteworthy. As you know, many uh, uh, parks, uh, battlefields are doing a lot of activities on this 150th anniversary of the Civil War, which started in 2011 and going to 2015. It just so happens this is the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga where Hans Christian Hegg uh, was killed. The previous day, September 19th, which is the battle that you just saw in the clip, the 15th Wisconsin, which he commanded, was fully exposed to enemy fire during repeated attacks and counterattacks throughout the day. While actively rallying his brigade from one of these repulses, Hegg received a mortal wound. It was the first day of the Battle of Chickamauga, and it wasn't going well for the men in blue. This triangular monument right here is on the battlefield, 10 feet in height, marks the spot where Colonel Hegg was mortally wounded. Now, seven more of these pyramids that are located throughout the uh, park, so it's quite noteworthy of all these soldiers and generals and what have you that served. It's quite, uh, quite nice that they did have a monument commemorating him, the sacrifice that he made there. And uh, if you ever go to Chickamauga, they have a little guide. You can actually take a tour, and that's one of the stops. And you can see where that's located. As you can see, the tranquility of the area, trees, much of the fighting was done in the woods. It was bitter fighting. Some of you may have caught it, lost over 300 some men just out of his brigade. Now it's interesting, uh, General Rosencrantz, who was the over, uh, commanding general over all the Union forces during that battle, he was planning on promoting Hans Christian Hegg to Brigadier General the next day. Real shame, he died as a colonel. Many people acknowledge him as Brigadier General because no question he would have made it because he was commanding a brigade. Because of the, you know, he did such a good job. He's very well respected by his men. What I want to do is I want to show you those of you that are in the battle battlefields. I love battlefield maps. So what I want to do is I'll just quickly show you a little bit about where the battle occurred. And you can see all the see those lines right here. Kind of make out these blue lines on that side. How many? What do you think the blue stands for? Take a guess. Blue, the men in blue. Okay, that's that's the uh, Union, and the red will represent the men in gray, which are the Confederates. So on the east side is where they gathered, commanded by Bragg. Rosencrantz, Army of the Cumberland, was on this side, and uh, uh, it turned out that Bragg uh, hightailed out of Chattanooga, which is to the north of here of Chickamauga, and this is the area where they met. It was kind of uh, the South's last gas trying to recover because they were losing the war pretty bad at that time. They needed some something good to happen. And this is one of the battles that, of course, uh, a lot of Southerners are proud of because uh, they came out smelling pretty good after the battle, <laughs> even though there's la large loss of life on both sides. Let me blow it up here a little bit. And you can see where Colonel Hegg, his line is right there. So we're focusing on this southern area right here where the first part of the battle occurred. It turns out that Rosencrantz wanted to get some of the men down here, some of the divisions down south here, and close the gap, so to speak. And it was one of those men under a fellow by the name of Jefferson Davis, Jefferson E. Davis. You got the yeah. big shot because yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's a union. This guy's a union guy. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, oh. this is not. Yeah, it's interesting. Same, and, same uh, name, different. A lot guy. of them did not like him. He was. Uh, what should I say? He was not very well liked, let me put it that way. You know, he was a very open tankers type of general. Even Hegg did not like him. He was he was really tempted. He was uh, requesting, you know, could I be transferred to another one? But uh, of course, he being a good soldier, you know, went ahead and uh, did what he needed to do. His line is right here. His brigade is located right here. And he had the 28th Illinois, the 15th Wisconsin, the 8th Kansas, and the 36th Illinois. And uh, he originally was the colonel for the 15th Wisconsin. I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the 15th Wisconsin, which Hegg spent most of the battle, most of the war with. If you remember in the movie, they talked about Hood, uh, General Hood, his men, General Johnson, and they were coming in here. And you can see a large number of uh, forces 
that encountered Heg. And you see this uh, blue line right here? Heg's men did penetrate to some degree into the Confederate forces and then they got pushed back. And it was during that time that Heg was mortally wounded. He ended up dying the next day. Oh, is that Jeb Stewart? The Stewart? Is that Jeb Stewart? Uh, yes, it is. Cavalry yes, Jeb Stewart, the cavalry. Okay. Yes, he, he did play a big role. In fact, he kind of uh, got involved in one of the first battles the previous day, but it wasn't really really the start of the, the uh, Battle of uh, Chickamauga. Yeah, you know, he, he being the cavalry, he uh, right. he skirted all over the place. So that is Jeb Stewart, right? Uh, Kevin Armstrong. Right? Yeah. The, the famous or the tourist, depending how you want to look at it. How many men, maybe I'll mention this later, how many men were totally involved in this whole battle? Okay, I'll give you some statistics okay. here, okay? Okay, I don't want to rush them. No, no problem. I was just getting into it. Um, there's, uh, as you know, the most costliest battle in the Civil War. Does anyone know what that was? What battle the most what? cost the most men Antietam. casualties? Antietam. No, it wasn't. Shiloh. No. Huh? It was Gettysburg. I was going to say Gettysburg. It was Gettysburg. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 the obvious answer is usually not the right thing, and they said Antietam. Antietam. Yeah, Antietam. Actually, Antietam had the bloodiest single day. Yeah, well, that's day. it. The bloodiest, it's bloodiest single, single day. day. No question about that. Yeah. And, and it still remains that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was a very bloody day that one day in April, mm -hmm. in 1863. Saturdays. But the overall battle over the course of two days, uh, in Gettysburg it was three days, that was the bloodiest battle overall. Mm -hmm. and so. That's number one. And uh, as you know, Robert Lee was the commander in the Confederate side. George Meade was the Union. Uh, 75,000 forces in Gettysburg engaged. Confederate forces, Union forces, 82,000. So a little bit more Union forces. And the casualties on that one was 51,112 in the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, to put this in perspective, that's just under the total death in the, in the War of Vietnam. And this is in the course of three days, 51,000 casualties. Okay, that's number one. What do you think the number two most costliest battle in terms of casualties? This one right here. This one right here, you are correct. A lot of people don't know that. They think of Antietam, they think of Shiloh, they think of some of the other battles, even Wilderness. Cold Harbor was a very bloody one. But Chickamauga was the second, number two, bloodiest and these are the statistics. Now, now did both, uh, both sides call it Chickamauga? No, actually, they did it. not. Um, let me see, the town, generally the Confederates named it after a nearby town. Right. And uh, the North, which tends to get in the and history the books, things, they named right. it after rivers and streams and yes. creeks. And, yeah. and Tietum was Bull Run, wasn't it? And Tietum was the name of the creek. Sharpsburg was the name of the town. Okay. So the so Confederates called it the Battle of Bull Sharpsburg. Run, which battle was Bull Run? Bull Run? That's yeah. the Battle of Manassas. Manassas. Yeah, Manassas. Right. They have the first one and the second one. There's two of them. And you know what? For some reason, they don't give a name of a town here. It's a real small town south of there. If you call it anything, it'd probably be one of these. You know, Bedford. Uh, you know, Lafleur is down here. But nobody ever, no, no they, historian ever used it. What did they call the Battle of Manassas? Battle of Chickamauga. Both sides actually call it Battle of Chickamauga on the creek. OK, this will give you some idea. The number of forces from the Confederate side was 66,000. And uh, for some reason, my thing got cut off here. <laughs> anyway, it was on the order of around, it was close to 50,000, like 48,000. It was quite a number that, that, uh, that, 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 that were killed. Yeah. Give me a second here. I think I can pull up the number. It was. It's just not in my printout here. Give me a second here. information on here just didn't get on my printout. Okay, what's it say there? Who's is engaged? Oops, 36,000. Okay, so you see there where it says, uh, see on the bottom there? 36,000, 58, Confederacy, 34,000. Okay, so it wasn't that much. But anyway, that was the second um, 
largest number of casualties in the Civil War. Okay. Okay, and then at the, the, uh, there's further, further battles up here. Uh, one of the very significant uh, uh, events uh, thrust during the, during the Battle of Chickamauga was Longstreet when he found a gap here. It was a mistake, actually, it was an error on the, on the side of some miscommunication going on on the Union side where these forces, uh, the, these forces went uh, a little bit to the south, these went to the north and left a big gap in the middle. Longstreet took advantage and he went right through the middle of it. And uh, that was one of the key uh, thrusts of the battle when the Confederates, uh, you know, run right through the middle there. And uh, in, in, a, in the end, Chickamauga is considered a Confederate victory because when you think about it, the Union forces were always winning but yet here's a case where Confederates, they came together and Longstreet came in from the north and was able to at least uh, do some damage to the, to the Union forces. This was considered one of the last big gas uh, of the Union, because after that it was downhill. 1963, 64 was going downhill, and of course 65 was the end for the South. Okay. I'd like to give a little background on Hans Christian Hegg himself. So we saw how his life ended in the Battle of Chickamauga, which is what we're celebrating this month. Hans Christian Hegg, he was uh, born in Lear, Norway. And uh, you're often not going to have a map of Norway up here. But uh, if you look at Oslo, it's a little south, west of Oslo, near Drammen. And that's where he was born. This is a modern day picture of the inn that their family ran. His father was Evan Hansen Hegg, mother was Sarah Hull's daughter Hegg. They ended up immigrating to the U.S. when Hans was only 11 years old. They settled in a place called Muskego. Uh, Muskego is still there. It's just east of, or I'm sorry, west of Milwaukee. Uh, it's quite a dynamic suburb in Milwaukee area. And if you go to Mosquito, you can still see part of the old part of uh, what they call Low Mosquito. They immigrated to America in 1840. Now keep in mind that the first immigrants that came over were the sloopers that came on in, in 1825. So this really wasn't a whole lot after the first Norwegians came over. Quite a few of them came in through, Norway, uh, through uh, Illinois, and they headed up to different locations, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. They settled on the shores of Mosquito Lakes. And they had a distinction for being a destination point for majority of immigrants to America. And one of the reason is, is because the first Lutheran church was at Muskego. Now this church right here is at a college, uh, I believe it's in uh, Minneapolis, one of the colleges there. And uh, you can actually go see where that old building is. The Heggs, uh, they were kind of well known in town. You know, Hegg became, uh, you know, he's kind of a, a good spokesman. and. I'll show you a little bit later about what he did. And uh, turned out the Hegg Park Barn was a good gathering point for a lot of the Norwegian Americans. Now, to picture this, a lot of them are coming over. New, new country, new land. A lot of them didn't even know what, uh, you know, American farmland looked like because it's so different in Norway. Yeah. So this was a new experience for them. Hegg, uh, because he became a fairly well outspoken person, uh, was looked at as a rising young politician. Now, he sided more with those that were against slavery. Now, keep in mind, this is 1840, 1840s. That was one of the issues that was dividing the country, was slavery. And despite what you hear about what caused the Civil War, I'll give you my opinion. I think a lot of historians will back it up. It's not state rights. It's not uh, other things you might have heard. It was indeed over slavery. Most historians are now acknowledging that's what it was. If it weren't for everything that, I don't think we would have had a civil it's war. It's probably because everything tied back into slavery. Like yes. It was about economics. It was economics, yeah. which was based on slavery, slavery being a very important part. And it goes back to exactly. the beginning of this country, for that matter. If you look at some of the, anyway, some of the, the historical aspects. So this indeed reached a boiling point, which caused our civil war, the whole issue. And states' rights was just another way of saying we want to keep our, our slave economy. That's what you're saying. And he was an art, uh, uh, art uh, a member, what they called the Soul, uh, Free Soil Party at the time. As you know, Abraham Lincoln was the first one of the Republican Party elected. Now, he wasn't the first.